Introducing Social Banking from GT Bank. Anywhere, anytime, any device. My name is Tunde Kelani TK. I'm a filmmaker and it's taken me a whole lifetime. I think the story of filmmaking in Nigeria or in Africa is linked to my own life history or story, you know, because I recognized early in life what exactly I wanted to do. And although I didn't start out to be a filmmaker, I discovered the camera. When, in the, when I was in primary six. And the, it fascinated me, this toy that could freeze a moment, you know, for life. And it um, made a lasting impression on me, you know, so it was decided then that I was going to spend time and money to learn it. And so by the time I was in secondary school, I had you know, bought a series of cameras. My first being from my primary school, which I never took a single picture with it. I just, I was happy to possess it. And I looked at it every morning, and that's, you know. But by the time I was in secondary school, I had actually purchased my first single lens reflex, which was the Halina 35X. And so, my journey had started because I had spent so much time and money to learn photography and to practice this in secondary school. And it made sense that I should seek a career in it because there's nothing else that uh, took my passion than in photography. I'm not going to count when I was an apprentice photographer which was around 68, 69, so don't let's count that. But that professionally I started work in the television station, the first in Africa, you know, was from 1970. And from 1970 to date, I have never stopped and I have never been diverted or distracted by any other business, you know, other than making motion pictures. And the only break I had was to stop for two years to attend the London Film School, where I did a diploma course in the art and technique of filmmaking. You know, and I rushed back immediately the weekend the course ended. I was back in Nigeria, you know, because I was an excited young man, and I thought I found or discovered the secret, you know, of making good films. The first film I co-produced was, was um, Adiba of Alitis, The Dilemma of Father Michael, or Yoruba Idamukwa di Mikaili. And because I didn't have any money, I approached Faliti and said, look, can we co-produce this? You know, so I, so I didn't have to pay uh, for the material. And then he had the partner then, the late Alaji Lazisi Oriakun. So he became another co-producer. And I had a, pro, a, a partner in Cinecraft, so Wally Fanny became a co-producer. And Faliti had suggested that in coordinating such a project, we needed Yemi Farumbi. You know, so we became five producers, you know, and we made this film and got Lafani Kadi to write the screenplay and to direct it. We made the film, but it was not very successful. So that was a sort of a first production. But we started uh, mainframe. I left Cinecraft to start mainframe productions after that. And the objective was to make it a production company, not a facility company. And we started with Tolu Anile you know, and all those films. And I think altogether we have about 14 you know, of those films. The warm Oh, mountain sir. Tanibabai! 
You know, I'm pulled in several directions, and you can now clearly, you can classify the body of films that, you know, I have managed to make. And you could say that some of them are straight fiction, you know, like Tolu and Les fiction, obviously. And Shaudia is fiction, Agogo is fiction. But apart from that, all the others are adaptations from literary works. And this is because I've loved literature from when I was young. I've read everything starting with the five books of Dio Fagunwa. It started from Igbo Lodumare. Igbo Jode Nino Igbo Yonu Mole. Aditio Lodumare. Enrique Rido. And I can't forget, I can't remember the last one. You know, so that's where my literature and literature started. And by the time I could read and write in English, I sought other stories. I, you know, I went into other literature outside of Yoruba. And in fact, in time, I was able to compare Greek mythology and the Yoruba pattern of gods and Orishas and things like that. So I have a soft spot for literature and I have the greatest respect and admiration for writers. You know, so I went out of my way to start to befriend them, starting from Faliti himself, then Akim Mishola, then Pai Mostutola, who wrote The Panwan Drinker when he was alive, and then Wale Ogunemi, and Olarotimi, you know, and Siprani Puensi, and recently I met Chino Achebe, you know, so I've always celebrated, you know, writers. And we have collaborated successfully. You know, the other films, Koshegbe, Oleku, Thunderbolt Magu, The White Handkerchief, The Narrow Path, Mami, they are adapted from literature. So you could say, you know, equally, you know, that they in, in the same fiction and adaptation. And then the next thing I'm going to make is an adaptation. The next one I'm going to make after that is adaptation as well. You know, and I think that if you, you know, if you look at the films, then there are some of them that have another pattern because they are classified as conscience films. You know, the conscience films are the ones that address social political themes. And you can find that in Shawarude, Agogo Ewo, The Campus Queen, and Aruba. You know, those are the conscience films. You know, so, you know, using the Yoruba language and culture, you know, as, you know, as, as a worldview, you know, I think I have managed to address some of these issues. Well, I prefer to work in the Yoruba language and culture because outside of issues of cultural diversity, you know, I'm, you know, much more, clo I'm, closer to that culture than any other culture. If it's a question of just language, I think it'd be easy to work in English, but it goes deeper than that, you know, because issue of culture or cultural expression is just not about the language they're speaking on the film. It has to do with the totality, you know, of a people's um, cultural experience and their cultural heritage and legacy. You know, so I don't have to be told or schooled much more in the Yoruba language and culture because it is a gift from God. You know, so all I could do is to enhance it and use it and develop it and learn about it and promote it, you know, rather than being a second class, you know, to another culture. So I. Primarily since, you know, I have a head start in that, in life, and it's influenced me. Um, I, I think that it is a valid uh, medium of expression. I couldn't express myself any better. I think funding is... I mean, the first challenge of any filmmaker, or perhaps any endeavor, or business or art, 
you know, and in film is tougher because the banks or the financial institutions still think it is speculative. And I, won't, I can't blame them, you know, because if they ask you, oh, you want 10 million naira from us, and how do you propose to return this money? Or are you sure that this thing will not be pirated? Of course, you are not sure, you know. And if I ask you, are you likely to make the money back? You are not even certain. You are not certain because the Nigerian environment and the industry lacks infrastructural support. In fact, it's a deficit, a huge deficit in infrastructure. You know, because even if you made the film successful, you couldn't make the money back in seven and a half cinemas. You know, you need 200 of them, and they are not there. And then, of course, technology failed because you can't cop piracy. And then enforcement failed, has failed, because the government cannot solve the piracy problem. They cannot enforce you know, this law. So it is difficult. Not only that, finding solutions where the producer ends up with about 60 percent, you know, of this income, and not this way around. Because as it is, the challenge is as none of us are making our money back. None of us, you know, where none of us is certain that we will recoup our investment. And by extension, none of, all, none of us is sure of the production of the next film. We already have about three or four projects in pre-production. We're just waiting to put the funds together. And the next film is going to be Dazzling Mirage, which is a success story written by Yinka Bokare. You know, because it's about time that I did something, uh, you know, on that particular subject matter, because I've been close to people who have suffered from sickle cell anemia. My advice, you know, to young aspiring filmmakers of anything, you know, is to develop a passion for whatever they want to do, you know. But if it is filmmaking, of course, they have greater opportunities than we had, you know, because they can even control the means of production. You don't need much, you know. The cameras the, in the digital era are all around. The means of production is available. So, and it is, you know, the hardest working, committed ones that will make it. So the thing is to roll, is to roll up their sleeves and be ready to work and to realize that they need to spend time at it. They can't become rich overnight.